in this video we are going to discuss about python program to check whether a given number is strong number or not first let's see what is a strong number strong number means the sum of factorials of digits is equal to the given number the best example for the strong number is 145 in 145 we have three digits such as 145 so the sum of factorials of these three digits is equal to 145 only. So what is the result of 1 factorial? 1. Next, what is the result of 4 factorial? 24. So 4 into 3, 12. So 12 into 2, 24. 24 into 1, 24. Next, the result of 5 factorial is 120. If we add all these three numbers, then the result is 145 only. So 145 is nothing but the given number. So we can say that 145 is a strong number. So let us see the program. So first we have to read a number from the keyboard. In order to read a number from the keyboard, in Python we use this input function. But the problem with input function is, input function returns the, the data as a string. But we have to convert that string into integer. So that should be done with the help of the int function. So n is equal to int of input of entering a number. Let we have entered 145. Now 145 is present in n. Next strong is equal to n. Why? Because here we are using the while loop. This while loop will be repeated as long as n is, e, n is not equal to null. So whenever the condition is false, then n becomes 0. n becomes 0. But what is a strong number? Uh, so the sum of digits, the sum of factorials of the digits is equal to the given number. But n is becoming 0. So that's why before going into the while loop, before checking the condition, we have to store n value in the strong variable. Now the value of the strong is 145. Next, the initial value of the sum is 0. So initially sum contains 0 because 0 plus anything is equal to anything. By adding 0 to any number, the result won't changes. Next, we have to repeat the loop as long as n is greater than 0. So first, we have to calculate the remainder. Let the number is 145. So 10 14 are 140. 145 minus 140 means 5. So first we have to get the remainder. Here the value of the R is 5. R is 5. Next we need to calculate the factorial of 5. In order to calculate the factorial for a given number, <coughs> here we have taken a variable called f. The initial value of the f is 1. Okay, Because 1 into anything is equal to anything. If you multiply any number with 1, then the result won't change. Okay. So here we are using the buffer loop. So for i in range of 1 to r plus 1. Here what is r value? r value is 5. So 1 to 6. So r plus 1 means r value is 5. So 5 plus 1 means 6. Here this is the stop value. If the stop value is 6, then 6 won't be considered. The loop will be repeated up to 6 minus 1. So the loop will be repeated up to 5. Okay. So that's why here we have written r plus 1. r plus 1. Okay. r plus 1 means the loop will be repeated up to r only. So f is equal to f into i. So whenever the condition is false, then f will contain the result of 5 factorial. What is the result of 5 factorial? 120. Now f value is 120. Now let us add f to the sum. So sum is equal to sum plus f. The initial value of the sum is 0. Now f contains 120. So 0 plus 120 means 120. So now sum contains 120. Now we have performed operation on 5. Next we have to perform operation on 14. In order to get 14 in n, we are doing this floor division operation. n is equal to n floor division. We have to use two slash symbols so that we will get only integer part. So by 10. So we will get now 14 as the result. Now n will become 14. Whereas instead of this, if we use division operator, then we will get floating point number as the result. We will get 14.5 as the result. But we need only integer part. In 14.5, what is the integer part? 14. So now n will become 14. So once again, control push the while loop. While 14 is greater than 0, condition is true. So r is equal to n modulo 10. The result of 14 modulo 10 is 4. 4. Next, f value is 1. f value is 1. So that's why here we have to assign f value. Suppose if we, if we assign f value here, then 
the value of 4 factorial may become some other value because what is the previous value of f120 so now 120 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 we will get that value as the result so that's why before the for loop we have to assign f value as 1 okay so what is the result of 4 factorial 24 so whenever this condition is false then we will get f as 24 okay so next to sum is equal to sum plus fact the previous value of the sum is 120 so 120 plus what is the result of 4 factorial 24 so 120 plus 24 means 144 now the sum value is 144 next n is equal to n by 10 so 14 by 10 means we will get the this integer part so we will get 1 as the result so once again control goes to the while loop now what is n value 1 so 1 is greater than 0 condition is true so now what is r value this remains 1 so now r value is 1 okay what is the result of 1 factorial? The result of 1 factorial is 1. Okay. The result of 1 factorial is 1. Next to sum is equal to sum plus fact. So f contains 1. So previously sum value is 144. So 144 plus 1 means 145. Now sum contains 145. n is equal to n by 10. So now what is n value? Integer part. This is 0. So next once again control goes to the while loop. Here n value is 0. 0 is greater than 0. Condition is false. So the control comes out from the value. So what is the value in strong 145? 145. Next, what is the value in sum 145? So strong is 145, sum is 145. So both are equal. So we can say that the number is a strong number. Now let us see whether this logic is correct or not practically in computer. Now let us see the program execution. So first we have read, uh, read a number from the keyboard. Uh, next uh, here uh, uh, in the while loop whenever the condition is false n becomes 0. So that's why before checking the condition we have to store n in some temporary variable. Let the temporary variable is strong. Now strong contains n. The initial value of the sub is 0 while n is greater than 0. So first we have to calculate the remainder. Uh, if the number is 125, then the remainder contains 5. Next, in order to calculate the factorial of a number, so this is the logic. So once we got that factorial result, then we need to add our fact value to the sum value. So sum is equal to sum plus fact. Next, we need to perform operations on its previous digits. So that should be done with the help of n is equal to n slash slash 10. We know what is a strong number. Uh, the sum of factorials of digits is equal to the given number. Okay, So whenever the condition is false, then check strong and sum. If they are equal, then we can say that it is a strong number. Otherwise, we can say that it is not a strong number. So let the number is 120. So 120 is not a strong number. Why? Because 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 0 means 1 factorial result is 1, 2 factorial result is 2. 0 factorial result is 0. So 1 plus 2 means 3. So 3 is not equal to 120. So that's why we can say that 120 is not a strong number. Let us take 145. So 145 is a strong number. So we got the output as a strong number. So with this we can conclude that our logic is correct.